Hello, hello. I am Ruishvin, and welcome back to Valheim Mod Reviews. During most of my mod review videos, I mentioned that you can change the configuration settings of that mod. It's the most common, consistent question that I see. So today, I'm going to walk through the process of finding those files and what those settings mean. Regardless of which method you use to load your mods, it's the same process to change the configurations. I will mention first that it is possible to completely unbalance your mods by changing too many settings. If this happens, or if there is a mod update, go into your config files and delete the file. When you start your game next time, it will automatically recreate the config file back to the updated default settings. Of course, check out the links in the description below and let me know your questions either in the video comments or visit my Discord. The first method to change the settings is finding the file itself in your Steam folder. Look directly in your Valheim game folder from the Steam apps directory. This is usually Steam, then Steam apps, then common, then Valheim. You should have the Bepinix folder in this Valheim folder. Open that, then go to the config. Sometimes people use mod managers such as R2 Modman or the Thunderstore mod manager. In that case, open the mod manager app and click on the profile you want to edit. You should see a settings option. From there, go to the browse profile folder. It will open in your file explorer. From here, again, we go to the Bepinex, then config. For either of these methods, you will need Notepad or Visual Studio, or a similar text editing app to do this. Those are both free and easy to use. I will be using Visual Studio or VS Code because it has the line numbers listed. Otherwise, it should look pretty much the same. The third method is in the game itself. You can download a mod called Official Bepinex Configuration Manager by Azumat. After you download this mod, open your game and press F1. Just make sure you're either paused or in a safe place. From here, I would recommend looking through the chapters of this video if you're looking for something specific. I will be explaining options as they appear in both the code and in the configuration mod. The configuration mod shows the options available with a button or drop down system to activate, deactivate, or change the settings. The code version is all edited through typing the configuration changes. The first option is usually general. It really only pertains to servers, so if you are managing a server, I recommend you keep this to on. Otherwise, you can ignore it. In a mod that has creatures, the first option is to allow taming, then the food items you would require for taming if it is not already activated. You can find those items at the website link below that has an item list with the game codes. In the configuration mod, applying the custom setting will most likely open more options, which are the same as in the config file. Next is the spawn configuration. If it says default, it means that it will apply the original settings already coded. You can disable the spawn or set it to custom. If you set it to custom, you can change the information below that and it will be applied to the creature. Most of these are self-explanatory. The altitude options can set the altitude in meters that the creature spawns. Same for the ocean depth for sea creatures. The global key will set a requirement for that creature or option to activate. It's usually associated with boss kills. The next section applies the spawn configs. You can change the group size minimum and maximum. You can also choose the biomes that you would like for the creature to spawn. The spawn area would be either everywhere in that biome, in the center of the biome, or on the edge of the biome. You can also configure the weather that the creature will spawn. If it is multiple sites of weather, pay attention to the coding requirements for that mod in the example default if it is given. The spawn altitude is generally fine at its default. It's just how high up it will appear and usually drop. You can choose for the creature to have stars or not, or to hunt the player. You can also set the spawn interval in seconds and the chances for that creature to spawn as a percentage. Generally, the percentage is usually a whole number where 100 is always or 100% of the time. I think the forest condition will allow the creature to spawn in wooded areas or set to no for clear areas. The maximum creature count is also pretty much self-explanatory. This occurs around the player. 
Then we get into the creature loot drop configurations. If it's set to default, the creature will drop what the mod creator intended. If set to disable, the creature will not drop anything. And if set to custom, you can customize what the creature drops as loot. If you're changing the file itself, be sure to pay attention to the default example and write any changes the same way. The format may change from mod to mod, but can be interpreted as name, colon, number of items dropped as a range, colon, percentage drop chance for that item, colon, then possible changes if the creature has stars. It usually ends with a comma to separate the next drop item, and usually no spaces. In the configuration mod, setting the drops to custom will open up new fields and allow you to remove or add items, change the number of items dropped, and adjust the percentage chance of that item dropping. You can remove drops by clicking the X or add them by clicking the plus sign. Let's look at another example that has building pieces. For this one, I will be looking at Blackstar's Clay Build Pieces mod. Again, the first option is Server Sync or General which makes it so admins can only change settings on servers. If we go to the piece itself, you will see a lot of different types of settings. The build table is where the pieces will show up on your build menu. Custom will create a new window in that menu and the category will name it. Tools needed would be one of your tools where the crafting menu appears, such as hammer, hoe, cultivator, or a custom piece. The crafting station is just like the other build pieces. You can assign whichever crafting station makes sense for your mod or even a custom crafting station. And finally, we have the crafting cost, which says the game name and the number needed. If you're changing the coded version, look for the example in the default and use that same formula. Pay attention to capitalizations and spaces, or it will not work correctly. Another option that may pop up in config files is for the trader, usually from custom items. You can set the trader value to sell the item to a trader for that amount in return, or set it at zero will make it non-tradable. You can also select which traders will sell the item, either Haldor or Hildur. If the mod has a custom trader, then you will have that option as well. The trader price is how much it costs to buy it. The stack is how many will be bought at once, such as fishing bait as sold in a stack of 20. You can also set the trader required global key, which locks the item for sale until the indicated boss or creature has been killed. Global keys for any other option work the same way. It requires that achievement to be earned before the item or creature is available. Depending on the mod, you will find other options, but most are similar to these. They follow the same rules and could have acceptable values listed. If you have a question about a specific mod setting, I'd love to help you out. Take a screenshot of the questionable item and post it in my Discord under the Mod Help section. Check out the links in the description below and let me know your questions either on the video comments or visit my Discord. Until next time, happy adventuring.